I'm Paul Hill. Uh, today, we're doing our usual talk on the book of Proverbs. And because it's the 19th, we're on Proverbs 19. I've been thinking, since you've done a lot of this, you understand the gist of what I've been teaching you. And I think I want to move on to teach you more about stories in the Bible. So this will be one of our last lessons that I teach you about wisdom. Okay? But remember, it's also important to read your Bible. You know that this book contains something that is important to you now. So if you ever find yourself needing to read the Bible or wanting to read the Bible, always come to this book. Always remember what we spoke about in these lessons that we've had. Come, have a look and try to learn something for yourself as well. Even though this might be the last time you touch on it, it should be the last time you actually encounter this book. You know what I'm saying? So, here we go. I'm going to move Proverbs 19 from verse 1 to 3. I'm reading in Jesus' name. Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. Desire without knowledge is not good. And whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. When a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. Wealth brings many new friends. A poor man is deserted by his friend. A false witness will not go unpunished. And he who breathes out lies will never escape. Many seek the favor of a generous man, and everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts. All the poor man's brothers hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursues them with words, but does not have them. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. But he who keeps understanding will discover good. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who grieves out lies will perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury, much less a slave to rule over the princes. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offence. A king's wrath is like a growl of a lion, but his favour is like dew on grass. A foolish son is ruined to his father, and a wife's quarrel is a continual dripping of rain. House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Slothfulness casts a person into deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Whoever keeps the commandment keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Discipline your son, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. A man of great wrath will pay the penalty, for if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. Listen to the advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. What is desired in a man is steadfast love, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. The sluggard buries his hands in the dish and will not even bring it back into his mouth. Strike a scoffer and the simple will learn prudence. Reprove a man of understanding and he will gain knowledge. He who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and reproach. Cease to hear instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A worthless witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked devours iniquity. Condemnation is ready for scoffers, and beating for the backs of fools. Amen? Amen. Let's start from verse 1. Better 
is the poor that walks in his integrity, and he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Amen. What do you guys understand from this verse? What do you think integrity means? Does anyone have any ideas? Jordan, what's integrity? Jaden. Oh, Jaden, love that. Protect something, that's good. What do you think they protect? If a person is humble, if, what do you think they protect? Jay, Jay. They're protecting themselves. Well, what do you think they're protecting themselves from? Think about the last word in that sense. Fool. They're protecting themselves from foolishness by. Being wise, to be in, to have integrity, is to be humble, to kind of be obedient, to be subservient, but also to be wise, to be smart, to be well grounded in yourself. And a person who has integrity can never be a fool, right? So it's better to have nothing. You know what the song is saying is, you're better off having nothing and having integrity, being humble, being wise. It's better to have nothing and be wise and have everything. Be a fool. Because at the end of the day, you have to think about it like this. Where are we all going? We're all going to the same grave. Then you can have everything in the world. If you live your life as a fool, you're going to go to hell. You might have nothing in the world. If you live your life for God, you have everything in the afterlife. Right? You can't have that. So that's why it's better to have nothing and be wise and have everything and be a fool. That's what someone is saying. Verse 2. Also, that the soul of our knowledge is not good, and he that hasteneth with his feet sinneth. I'll read that in my translation, just to make it a long term. Desire without knowledge is not good, and whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. What do you think haste means? If you're going to buy a car, you 
You want to at least see it in person first. You want to at least drive at least once. You want to know how many miles it's done. You want to know its price. You want to know everything about it so you can gauge whether you really want this car or not. If you can want anything, but to want something and not know anything about it, that's being too fast. You're setting yourself up to fall. And now you're going to say
how their life has turned out. They make bad decisions. Bad decisions catch up to them and they blame God for what's caught up to them. But in the reality of things, they did it to themselves the whole time. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why their hearts rage against God, because they're blaming God for everything bad that happens to them. But the reality of this, they did it to themselves the whole time. You get it? Yeah. Next verse, verse 4. Wealth made many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. I'll read it in my translation. Wealth brings many new friends, but a poor man is deserted by his friend. Christy, go ahead. Shall not be unpunished, and 
he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Amen. What's a false witness? What is a false witness? Amen. If witness means someone can see something, what's a false witness? Yes. Someone who says they were done and they were not done. Perfect. Amen. Let's say you're in court. In court, you have to have witnesses, people that were there to document and say what actually happened at a crime. Imagine if someone was there, imagine if all the people, all the witnesses were there, and they lied. Imagine being, imagine being prosecuted for killing someone, and you go to court, and you know you're innocent, but a lot of all the people that are there to prosecute you, all say they were there, and they're all lying, and you get sent to prison for the rest of your life for a crime you commit, because a group of people banded together and lied. These people are false witnesses. And God hates false witnesses. God hates lies. And these people, their lies in themselves against others. They won't just they won't just be able to not be able to pay. They'll be able to mm, you get what I'm saying. They won't be able to escape from the wall, right? They might turn their lives around. They might pay their sins back. But they have to suffer the consequences that they've given other people. They have to sell, they have to face the brunt of their own lives. Mm. They'll have to face it all. So someone is saying they can never escape. Good or bad, they can't escape from what they've done to other people. And someone is promising that. Right? Um. Verse 6. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. And every man is a friend to him that gives gifts. Amen. 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 materialism. People are only friends. People love those who have something. People love those who can offer you something. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. My brother, you know, I'm going to give the word friends. It says, Many seek the favor of a generous man. Many want something from someone who's happy to give. Right? What about when a generous man has nothing? Who will want something from a generous man? Right? No one will care about this man. Everyone wants to be your friend when we have something. But only a few people want to be your friend when you don't have anything anymore. Right? And these are the kind of people, these are genuine people, these are real friends. People that see you for your qualities, for your character, and not for your possessions. These are the people you need to keep an eye on. Right? Verse 8. I'm going to read verse 8. He that gave wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Amen. 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 When you get wisdom and when you follow the good path and you die one day, where will your soul end up? Only good people. Hey, what do good people do? When a good person dies, what is a good person do? When a person who believes in God and follows God's word dies one day, where do they go? Heaven. Heaven. Yeah? This one is a bit more simple. What does it mean if this person is doing all this, like let's say they live their life on earth and they do so much, do so much good, they spread so much wisdom. What does that mean they feel for them? How do they feel for their own soul? What does that mean? It means they love their own soul. They're putting their soul first to save themselves and secure a place in the world to come. Right? Now, Bible also says that he that keeps from his hand shall find good. Now, one of the most important things that Solomon talks about is distinguishing between the wise person and the foolish person. And one of the biggest differences is that if you correct or if you rebuke one of them, both of them do something wrong, and then tell them what they're doing is wrong, the wise person will hear what you're saying and they'll change, but the foolish person will hear what you're saying but they'll never listen and they'll ignore what you're saying because they think what they're doing will always be right. But to that wise person who hears what you're saying and keeps understanding, don't find good things in their life. Because of their open mindedness, because of their willingness to listen. There will be 
blessed by God. Verse 11. I want to read it in my translation. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to be slow to anger? Right? Who can tell me what it means to be 
dimineață să credem în Domnul. Și azi bună dimineața să credem în Domnul. Just respect God. What does it mean to respect God? How do you respect God? Chris, do you have an idea? How do you respect God? You listen to Him. You listen to Him. Perfect. If I'm listening to Him, what am I listening to? Oh God, what is God giving me to listen to? You got an idea? What are we reading? The Bible. Bible. What's in the Bible? Whose word is in the Bible? God's word, right? God's never said anything bad. God's never said anything that will corrupt someone, right? The purpose of this book is to guide, right? Amen. The purpose of this book is to enlighten someone's mind. Someone is troubled, someone is questioned. Even us as Christians, even with the mind of good lives, the life of a Christian is like being on a big boat and you're in the middle of the sea. It's not every day it's going to be a nice blue sky and the sun is up. Sometimes it's going to be storms, sometimes it's going to be challenges. And when there's a challenge, that's when you open your guide. Because you have to make it outside of the storm. No Christian has had a happy life. If I told you the first four disciples of Jesus, if I told you how they died, you'd be so disturbed. And I don't think this is the time to talk about it. Right? The life of a Christian is an easy life. Jesus told them himself. When you accept me, you also accept what's going to come. What's going to come to you. People will not like you. As many people as you try to help, as many people as you love, not everyone will love you back. Right? Think about it like this. Every single piece of music, that's the every, think about music. Every music has a genre. Every genre has a listener that likes the music. Every genre also has someone that hates the music. Think about country music. There's probably someone in America that likes country music. For me personally, I hate country music. There's a lover and there's a hater, right? There's no such thing as a Christian that is loved by everyone. That's reality. And that's reality you have to accept. Even as people, there are people that are loved by everyone, but I hate by someone at the same time. There's always someone who will not wish the best for you. And you need to know that. That's the reality. And that's the life, that's the world we're in. It's a life we're in. But regardless of that, as Christians, as people that love Jesus, and as people that Jesus has commanded to love others, we must love them. That's part of the game. And that's how God gives us everything else. That's how when we pray, God gives us something, God will give us because you've done his word, you've listened to his word, you've followed his commandments, you've shown that you fear the Lord. 